Sorry I'm sweaty. It's kind of like how I am in the summer. Too many cheeseburgers. Anyways, you can see it's squirting out a little bit of water. It was working for about 15 minutes and then it started to lose pressure and here's what we end up with. This is all spring water from up on the hill behind me. And this is like 100% of it or 99% of it, as much as I can reasonably collect. And during the summer, it's middle of September now, it's, we've only gotten two inches of rain this month. So it, the spring isn't flowing very much. The problem is, I have all of this grass here that needs water. And I'm too cheap to use city water, so I'm using the spring water. And I don't have enough flow to keep this pressurized and spinning all the time. So here's what I've come up with. So as you saw, I don't have enough flow, so I need to make that flow intermittent. Enter this valve that I found on Amazon. Uh, link in the description. Uh, let's see, for you guys it would be that way. Link in the description. And it's a valve that takes 9 to 24 volts input and when you apply power, it opens the valve, and when you remove power, the motor inside closes the valve. You might ask, well, if you remove power, how does the motor do anything? And it's smart because it has capacitors inside. So I gathered some equipment that I needed to complete this. Really the only special things here, since I want to make it a timer, I have this timer thing here that does every half hour. And I can adjust what's on and what's off. A lot of the sprinkler valves that I was able to find anywhere don't have this amount of customizability. And then the only other special thing is a power supply to run this. In this case, this is a printer power supply from an old printer. And this does uh, 32 volts and 15 volts. And it has enough current to run this valve. This valve, it says five watts. So at 15 volts, this is 530 milliamps, which is what, like seven, seven or eight watts, somewhere in there. So this is enough to run this valve. So it's center ground. And since I just took off the connector, I don't know which one is the correct side for 15 volts. It says which side's which here. So, and that's why I brought my multimeter. Just to tell me what's what. Okay. This one here is 32 volts. I do not want that. So I'm gonna peel it back and just cut it off flush. leaving me with these two, the ground, and the one that actually supplies voltage. Which I guess I can unplug this for now, and I will strip these down. My little plug and play connectors, these are Wago lever nuts, which allow me to quickly connect up wires for prototyping of things like this. Uh, I don't know which one so it's plus 15 volts. I have to look up which one's which. So in this case, red is positive, and since the power supply says that the voltage is on the positive side, I'm gonna put that in here like this. So that's the power side, and then this is the ground side. It looks to be connected. Okay, and now, See if I can spin this around so you can see. And if I plug this in, it should open. <laughs> now I remove power. Come on, wire, you're in the way. Get out of the way. Now I remove power and it closes. Add power, open. Remove power, close. Now 
Nice. Okay, let's go hook this up outside. The only special thing I have to do is, whoops, instead of this short assembly here, I have to run an extension cord. Luckily, this is an extension cord which is already missing the ends. So I can just wire this in to hook this up. Since what I'm doing doesn't really require a pressure gauge, er, come on. No, oh, you're not going. I can just replace this pressure gauge here that's on with three quarter fittings, three quarter MPT national pipe thread. I can just replace this with that valve. And did you know that hose fittings are not NPT? So this is an adapter from NPT to MHT, MHT standing for male hose thread. And I gotta do that some more. There we go. Come on. There we go. Nope. There we go. This doesn't seem to be directional. So I'm just going to put it in one way or one side of it. <clears throat> okay, that's in. You know, black to back, black to black, and then white to red. Since this is outside and gonna get rained on, I have a waterproof covering. I have configured this so that all of the pins are down, so that means it should turn on immediately as soon as I plug it in. Oh, forgot I have to turn on this valve here. Hmm, something's not working. Okay, let's try this again. I had to turn on the valve for my main water line the one that's right before the electronic valve. Okay, let's try this again. One of these pins was slightly up and I couldn't push it down like, like that. I had to rotate it a little bit to push it down and now they're all on. <laughs> There we go, it's working. There we go, I made my own sprinkler valve with more granular time settings, so I'll never miss a watering again because I have a finite amount of pressurized water. This runs for about 20 minutes, that timer is a 30 minute duration. So it'll be on for 30, off for 30. So about 20 minutes of those, 20 minutes per hour or about 33% of each hour, this will be on and sprinkling the yard. So that's fantastic, working as planned. You can see the bucket there behind the bush. That's where the valve is. And then the extension cord, which is only low voltage. It's only 15 volts DC, so it's not dangerous at all.